Are you ready to kickstart your Node and Express journey? In this video, we'll walk through the essential steps to quickly scaffold a fully functional Express app from scratch. In addition to setting up Express, we'll integrate TypeScript and Jest for type safety and testing, configure ESLint and Prettier to ensure code quality, and finally, add Nodeman to automatically restart the Express app whenever changes are made to the code. Hi, my name is Alex. I'm a senior software engineer with years of experience in API development. My goal is to help you become a more skilled and proficient developer. Let's get started. I am in an empty folder, so let's initialize our Node.js and Express app by typing npm init-y. The code for this video will be available in the Git repository, so check out the description. Now let's install TypeScript packages, TypeScript, TSNode, types for node and TSConfig, Node20 base. TSNode package will let us run the TypeScript directly in the node without pre-compiling. TSConfig, Node20 base is a base configuration file we will be extending since currently Node20 is the latest uh, LTS or long-term support version. Next, we'll run npx ts-init which generates a tsconfig.json file. Let's open it, delete the default content and paste in our own configuration, which extends node 20 base tsconfig. This setup includes compiler options, outputs to a disk directory and specifies that will include files from the src directory while excluding node modules and dist. To explore other tsconfig bases, head over to GitHub tsconfig repository where you can find more configurations. If you are using Node 22, you can install and use Node 22 base in your configuration instead of Node 20 base. Now, let's install Jest, TS Jest, and Types for Jest, all saved as uh, development dependencies. We'll then create jest.config.mgs file with the settings to use the tsjest preset. Specify the test environment as node and set up testing for files with a src test directory. We'll also configure jest to recognize .ts files. Next, we'll create utils.ts file in the src folder with a some utility code, followed by a test for it in the tests folder. In the package.json file, we'll add scripts to run the tests in standard and watch modes, and then we'll run npm run test to verify everything is working. With testing set up, let's configure ESLint and Prettier. First, ensure you have the ESLint and Prettier extensions installed in VS Code. You can also enable format on save in the editor settings for automatic code formatting. In the terminal, run npm init at eslint config to configure eslint. We will want to check syntax and find problems. And the module type will be common JS. There will be no, none for frameworks. Uh, does your project use TypeScript? Yes. Uh, where does your code run in Node.js? And install dependencies? Yes. After installing our dependencies, eslint's configuration, eslint.config.mgs, file is automatically generated, but we're going to update it shortly. Now we're going to install the dependencies to integrate Prettier with ESLint. You don't have to integrate Prettier with ESLint, but I prefer doing so. Let's install the following dependencies, ESLint plugin Prettier, ESLint config Prettier, and Prettier itself, using dash dash save dev. Before we proceed, note that ESLint uses a flat config file and not all plugins fully support it yet. First, let's open the package.json file, scroll to the bottom and add the following configuration. We will override the ESLint version, ensuring it matches the version of ESLint we are using. In our case, it's 9.12.0. If your ESLint version is different, adjust the override accordingly. After saving the package.json file, we can go ahead and install the Prettier plugins. Next, let's update eslint.config.mgs file. Delete the existing configuration and replace it with the following code. Now let's break it down. 
ESLint configuration may look a little bit different to what you are used to because it uses the new flat config format. It exports an array where you can define configuration as objects. Each configuration object applies specific settings depending on the type of files and the rules needed. ESLint combines all the configuration objects, allowing those placed later in the array to potentially override the settings of the earlier ones. Let's walk through the configuration objects. The first object ignores the disk directory. The second applies rules to the SRC folder, focusing on JS and TS files. The next object applies common JS specific rules. Another object configures globals for Node.js like require and module. Uh, then we use plugin like ESLint recommended for JavaScript and TypeScript ESLint recommended for TypeScript. We also configure just specific rules for test files in the SRC tests folder, adding the just recommended rules and disabling just prefer expect assertions rule. Next, we add custom rules. Here we disable a TypeScript ESLint no unused vars to prevent linting errors related to unused variables in TypeScript. We also configure Prettier to handle automatic fixes for end-of-the-line differences with a end-of-the-line auto. You may adjust these rules depending on your needs and add your own custom rules. Finally, we include ESLint plugin Prettier recommended, which applies Prettier formatting rules and ensures ESLint integrates with Prettier. It's important to place this at the bottom of the configuration to ensure it overrides any conflicting settings. Next, let's go back to the package.json file and add a script for linting. Save the changes and run npm run lint. Looks like we encountered an error indicating that the jest plugin is missing. To fix that, let's install eslint plugin jest with npm install eslint plugin jest dash dash save dev. Once that's done, run npm run lint again. You might get a warning about TypeScript version compatibility, but it's nothing to worry about. ESLint will uh, catch up with the newer TypeScript versions. If you are enjoying this video so far, please like and subscribe to our channel to help YouTube recommend it to more viewers. After configuring TypeScript, Jest and ESLint, we can finally install Express. Uh, let's install the following dependencies, Express, Course and Morgan. This will be added as a production dependencies. We'll also install the types for these uh, packages to work with the TypeScript as dev dependencies. Now let's create our express server file in src server.ts. Here's the basic code. We import express morgan and course. We apply middleware like morgan for logging requests, express.json and express.url encoded for parsing request bodies and course to allow cross-origin requests. We also create a simple health check route, get health, uh, which returns OK true to confirm the app is running. Next, create an index.cs file in src folder to import and run the server. We'll listen on a port 3000. To streamline development, we'll use Nodemon to automatically restart the server on code changes. Install Nodemon as a dev dependency and create nodemon.json file. Configure it to watch the src folder and restart the server when changes are made to JS, TS or JSON files. Use TS node to run TypeScript files directly in node.js without precompiling. Finally, add dev script in the package.json to run nodemon. Now, when we run npm run dev, the server will start and restart automatically when changes. To test the API, create an api-test.http uh, file in the root of the project. This file makes API requests similar to Postman. To make it work with a VS Code, install the REST client extension. After installing the extension, you will be able to send requests directly from this file. Run npm run dev to start the server. You'll see a message indicating the server is running on port 3000. Send a request to the health endpoint and you should get a response OK true. We can modify the code to test whether Nodemon is working. Change the response to OK false and Nodemon will restart the server automatically. 
send the request again and you'll see the updated response. Now let's change it back to OK True. That's how you can scaffold a modern Node.js and Express app. There is more to cover, so be sure to check out the other videos in this series. We moved quickly through setting up TypeScript and other tools, so if you need a more detailed guide on setting up production-ready Node.js project, check out our dedicated video on that topic.